Hi, this is Stu Harrison. We're here at Miriam Pianos in Oakville, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. And we're going to be looking at the GL40 Grand Piano from Kauai. The GL40 is Kauai's recent upgrade uh, or update to their rather famous RX2 uh, that was a dominant uh, player in the institutional grand piano market from probably the late 90s right up until about 2013-2014. The GL40 is approximately the same size as the RX2. Uh, it's one inch longer, the 5'11 versus 5'10 in the RX2. Uh, and a lot of the same features have been retained, but there are some differences. And so I want to point out what those differences are since so many people are familiar with the RX2. I think that'll be more helpful than me just talking about this in isolation. And of course, at the end, we're going to give it a nice test run and let you hear how it sounds at home. One of the biggest upgrades to the GL40 versus the RX2 has really been its action. The RX2 and the GL40, of course, use the Millennium 3 action, which is their carbon fiber action. Tons of information online about this. Um, but the difference between the two is on the GL40, just like the rest of the GL line, the key length has actually been extended. So when you look at uh, the total lever length of a GL40 key, uh, compared to an RX2 key, it's more than an inch longer. Uh, why is this important? Um, well, for anybody who plays um, repertoire of, of any sort of difficulty, a longer key gives you more accuracy uh, when you're playing both quickly as well as in the lower dynamic ranges. So as I said, both the RX2 and the GL40 use the Millennium 3 carbon fiber action. So what's the difference? Well, on the GL40, they've actually extended the key lever by almost one inch. So that is the entire length of the key, both this white portion as well as the, as the unfinished wood portion behind the key bed going all the way back to uh, the cap stand. And so what does that extra inch give you um, in terms of playability on the GL40 that's missing on the RX2? Well, anytime you extend a key, you're increasing or improving a lot of dynamics. One is that uh, the power that you can apply to the key is improved just because of basic geometry. Just like any other lever, um, as you extend the lever, um, you're able to apply more force with the same amount of uh, motion or the same amount of pressure. Uh, so you have increased the, the dynamic potential of the instrument right away. Uh, the other thing it does is it also improves the speed of the repetition as well as the control you have in the lower dynamic range. So generally speaking, there's almost no downsides whatsoever to extending a key. The main reason why it's not done in smaller pianos like the GL40 or the RX2 or in Yamaha like a C2 or C3 or something like that is there just isn't room. Um, so the main reason why this GL40 is an inch longer than the RX2 is it's accommodating that inch of key length. That's the only reason the piano is actually longer. Other than that, the scale design in the GL40 is exactly the same as the RX2. The last thing I want to draw your attention to with the GL40, particularly in comparison to the RX2, is the soundboard and the rim. The RX2 broke a lot of ground by being one of the first, or perhaps the first, production uh, grand piano uh, to offer a full hardwood rim. Um, this was something that many companies were doing, but uh, more in the limited production versions of their pianos, like with Yamaha, the S series, or of course, a lot of the higher-end European pianos, such as the C. Beckstein, uh, you know, or the Hamburg Steinway, all used solid hardwood rims. But to have that in a $20,000 grand piano with the RX2 was very unusual. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The GL40 continues that tradition of offering a full hardwood rim uh, to customers in the low to mid $20,000 range. Um, now, the other thing that the GL40 has updated, though, uh, is that they have gone to a fully tapered soundboard. Now, I mentioned that in another review uh, dealing with the GL10. What's a tapered soundboard and why should you care? Well, tapering the soundboard increases the amount of the soundboard surface, which actually can generate tone. Normally, as you get closer to the edges of a soundboard, um, if the soundboard is the same thickness, it increases in rigidity as it gets closer to that point where it's clamped down. And of course, that means that as you get closer, that wood becomes generally uh, resistant to, to vibration. It's not really that usable. So by tapering it, you offset that effect and you increase the, the area where the soundboard is able to vibrate. Uh, the other thing tapering does is that it, it prevents the distortion effect that occurs when the soundboard's crown uh, flattens out. 
Um, so there are some sonic advantages to certainly having a tapered soundboard. And of course, as we said, we've kept the hardwood room. We're going to listen to the GL40 now. We've spent enough time talking about it. Uh, and how we're going to be recording it, as we do every piano that we feature here on our reviews, is with a Zoom H4 on recorder right in the middle of the instrument. It uses a pair of stereo condenser microphones, and that's the only way in which we're micro, uh, miking the piano. Um, the sound is totally unaffected. It's just a straight export. We want you to be hearing as close to what we're hearing here in the store, um, back home in the comfort of your computer or phone or however you're listening to this. So I'm going to get playing. Enjoy. You really have a pretty full command of the dynamic range on an instrument like this. Tons of power in the bass, lots of articulation when you need it, uh, and a great clarity throughout the entire range. I mean, the evenness of the piano always has been, and I'm sure will continue to be the hallmark of, of the playing experience. So once again, the GL40, I'm Stu Harrison. Thank you so much for your time, and we're here at Mirren Pianos.